Hey everyone, my name is Blue, and today we're going to go through some more malicious compliance stories. Thanks for tuning in, and if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to our channel. And with that, let's get into it. Sorry, you revoked my overtime privileges yesterday. This was several years ago when I worked at a redacted big name coffee shop. My shift was 5 a.m. to 1.30 p.m., and often around 1 p.m., giant groups of kids on school field trips would come through the area. This was a coffee shop located in a major California city, very close to a bunch of museums. I had been working a lot of overtime because of it to help my coworkers through the rush. I got written up by my supervisor for doing too many overtime shifts without approval. I was explicitly informed to not work overtime again. I had lost overtime privileges until corporate deemed I could have them again. And working overtime again prior to that would result in further disciplinary action. The day after I was written up, right as my shift ended, three big buses full of kids unloaded and filled the shop. At 1.30 p.m. on the dot, my watch alarm went off and I went to go clock out. The store manager who wrote me up the day prior said, wait, where are you going? I reminded her that I'd lost my overtime privileges, clocked out, retrieved the shift drink I'd made for myself right before the rush, and left. The next day, I was informed my overtime privileges had been reinstated. Edits. Whoa, this took off in a way I didn't expect. This was almost a decade ago, when I was in my early 20s and an eager-to-please employee, so I didn't demand that they take the write-up off my record, unfortunately. My coworkers all knew about the write-up and were pissed about it too, so none of them were mad when I spite left to prove a point. I worked the super morning shift by choice because I used to be a morning person, because the field trips were super sporadic, and there was no way to predict them without knowing the field trip schedules of the entire region. Our manager had somehow managed to avoid ever experiencing one since she typically left around noon. Once she saw what they were like and started believing us, they scheduled one of the afternoon shift people to come in an hour early so we had better overlap. That's the thing with managers, sometimes they just don't understand what the people in the trenches go through, but as soon as they have to deal with it, oh boy, is it a different story entirely. I feel like more managers should have to do their employees' jobs on a regular basis just to get a feel for it. Get my manager? No problem. I've been floating on this subreddit for a while and finally decided to share a recent experience that has become my favorite so far. For context, I'm a PSA UM, which is Passenger Services Unaccompanied Minor Assisted, in an airport. To put it simply, I help both minors, elder, and the disabled to their next flight. This didn't happen to me directly, but I was somewhat involved, and it was funny. This happened just yesterday. I was assisting a disabled woman in one of the airport wheelchairs, with possibly finding a seat on the flight as she was on standby. As I'm explaining the situation to my passenger, a heated discussion breaks out between the gate agents and a high-quality Karen. The agents are trying to explain to her that, per airline policy, masks must fully cover your face from your nose down, and the bandana over her face was not good enough, and they could give her a proper one. Karen argues that she, quote, has had this mask on for the past three flights and it was never a problem. The gate agents severely doubt her claim. The arguing continues for a minute more before Karen uses the signature line, Can you go get your manager? I want to speak to someone who knows how to do their job. The gate agent says, You got it, and almost skips away to find her manager. They both come back over and the manager addresses Karen one more time, as the agent had already given him a quick rundown of the situation. Manager. Ma'am, 
Per whatever airline's policy, your mask must cover your nose and mouth fully. Hanging facials clothes, gas masks, and masks with valves are not permitted. We have extras to give you if you need one. Karen. So basically, you don't know how to do your job either. The manager breathed a quick sigh, says, okay, and takes over the computer for about five minutes before waving me and my passenger onto board the flight. It wasn't until I walked out of the jet lane and seen Karen still standing in the waiting area that it dawned on me. The manager had taken Karen's seat and given it to my passenger who was on standby. Judging from the screaming and cursing after that door closed, Karen didn't realize it right away either. I just don't understand why there was a problem if the airline was offering to give this Karen a mask. Like all she had to do was put on this perfectly free mask, get on the plane and go where she needed to go. Maybe the bandana was super stylish. Maybe it tied her whole outfit together. Who knows? All I know is she's grounded. Corrupt manager wants me to reject crucial supplies. I do as instructed. About a couple of decades ago, I used to work at a concrete production plant for a reputable construction company. Our company, like several other construction companies, were awarded a portion of a larger project. A large portion of land was earmarked for setting up temporary office buildings and concrete plants for the different construction companies. The sites were separated by temporary barriers and had separate entrances. As many of you may, or not, know, concrete is produced by mixing cement, water, sand, and stone grits, size 20 millimeters and 10 millimeters, along with special admixtures in a specific ratio. Our recipe also contained a special ingredient, stone dust. Turns out, only our company used stone dust in our concrete and the neighbors did not. So a special truckload full of stone dust was specially shipped for us. This is important later. My job entailed orchestrating concrete delivery to our project sites apart from regular quality control tasks like checking incoming materials for quality, etc. Only after I had signed the delivery receipts, our store's personnel would unload the trucks at designated areas. A log of all trucks entering and leaving the concrete batching plant would be kept by security at gate. That'll be relevant later. Since my job entailed checking incoming material before accepting, the suppliers would usually try to offer some petty bribes from cash to booze to flesh, if you uh, know what I mean. I always declined such offers as once accepted, you became their dog and lose all respect in their eyes. Moreover, bad material also impacted the quality of concrete produced. Strength, consistency, and setting time to name a few. Since concrete delivery was also part of my job, it was in my best interest to only accept good material. Otherwise, the client would chew me up during casting. One night, a supplier truck entered the premises with 20 millimeter stone chips. Upon testing, I found them to be undersized for 20 millimeter and oversized for 10 millimeter. I went ahead and rejected the load. The driver and supplier started pestering me offering bribes and whatnot. When I didn't budge, they called my boss who asked me what was going on. I explained that the quality of the material was unacceptable and I have rejected this. When I mentioned it is too small for 20 millimeter, he ordered me to dump it in 10 millimeter bin anyway. I knew what that meant. My boss was on the supplier's payroll. A couple of weeks passed by and my boss asked me to reject a truckload of material from a very reliable supplier. He knew that the supplier was only delivering stone dust that day, and should we reject material, the entire load would be a waste and a loss to the supplier. Once the stone chips or stone dust has left the quarry, they, for some reason, can't bring it back. Hence, my boss wanted to hit the supplier where it hurt most, especially stone dust as there was no other company that would take it. Q Malicious Compliance 
I called the supplier, who had become a friend by now, and told him that I was under orders to reject a truck. He panicked and told me that my boss was putting pressure on him for bribes. This particular supplier believed in providing quality material and always visited my lab to understand how I tested the material and what my requirements were. He would then go back to his quarry and adjust the equipment to deliver the best quality materials. Because he put so much effort in improving the quality of his product, he did not budge and bow down to my boss's demands. I asked the supplier friend to route a truckload of 20 millimeter stone chips meant for some other company to my plant first. I would let the gate security log the truck's entry and then promptly reject the material. He was then supposed to send the stone dust, which I would accept and be done with my task. Everything happened as planned. I completed my remaining activities for the night and went home. When I came back to work in the evening, my boss was waiting for me at the door. As expected, he had checked the entry exit log as well as the material receipt history. He had noticed that I had accepted the stone dust and was chewing his anger, waiting for me to explain. He very casually asked me if I had rejected a truckload. I acted dumb and answered an affirmation. I told him that the very first truck, a 20 millimeter, was rejected. Now, usually, 20 millimeter is never rejected, especially from this supplier. So he asked me what reason did I give while rejecting the truckload. I said, flakiness index, a test we never do as a field test, but is mandated by the client to be done once a quarter. He knew that I was playing him, but he couldn't do anything. I had done exactly what he had asked me to do, reject a truckload. I had covered my bases with the security log as well as material receipt, so he just muttered something under his breath and never mentioned this to me again or asked me to do anything similar. Two months later, he was transferred to a different site and I became the overall in charge. Same designation and pay, just more responsibilities. Transferring this guy doesn't seem like enough, like he's taking weird shady deals for like construction? That seems like felony area to me, but what do I know? I don't know anything about concrete. And on that note, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening to the stories, and if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing. Catch you later, everyone.